Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Portia Laurie and I talk about TV, movies, and basically anything pop culture. If that's something you're into, please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And if you hit that bell icon next to it, you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Today, I wanna to start something new on my channel. I'd like to do a series on Disney Channel original movies, but I want this to be about what we learn from these movies. And the reason I'm talking about Disney Channels in specific is because I feel like children's media tends to, they want to build some type of morals and types of stories so that it's semi-educational for kids watching. But I feel like Disney does this super loosely or like overtly intensely. Does that, I didn't know, did I just make up a word? Just the ones that only are released specialty on the Disney Channel. And I thought since since 2019, the best way to kick this off is by reviewing some movies that came out 20 years ago. Um, if this sounds cool to you, if this is something that interests you, make sure to hit that thumbs up so that I know, and then I'll keep making more videos like this one. And today I'm talking about one of my personal favorites, Smart House. But if you've never seen Smart House before, it came out in 1999 on the Disney Channel, obviously. It starred a very young Ryan Merriman and Katie Seagal as Pat. Or some of you might know her better as um, What's-Her-Face on SOA. Um, or also Peggy Bundy. So Ben Cooper is basically the backbone of his family. It seems that after his mother passed away, he kind of tried to take over her duties as being the house mom, if you will. I hate using that term because anybody could be a stay at home, but remember, okay, this is the 90s. This is what was socially normal. Ben's pretty happy with the way that his family works. He really likes taking care of them and making sure that they have um, food on the table for dinner, that everyone's in bed on time, and that the homework's done. Leaving his dad to focus really on just going to work and making sure he gets food on the table. But we come to find out that Ben is really addicted to this thing called the internet. Just being into technology is kind of considered weird or fad or it's like not going to be around long. And it's just funny to like see how far we've come from that. Anyway, so Ben is addicted to the internet, <laughs> the World Wide Web, and is entering a contest like every hour, every minute, trying to get this smart house, which he thinks will help to make everything easier in not only his life, but his whole family's life. And you know, it all sounds pretty pretty cool from the outside pointing in. So Ben obviously wins the smart house, otherwise we wouldn't have a movie to film. One dinner and a five minute tour for Ben to convince his dad to actually move into the house. His dad has no backbone whatsoever. <laughs> so they move into the house and I think they go like one full day where it's just like, it's like your, it was our 1999 dream that like you would move into a house that was this cool. You know what I mean? Like, there's an entire room that's like all the walls are made out of like whatever projectors, the screen projector thing. So like it can turn you into like whatever room you want to be in. At one point they're like laying down playing video games and I'm on the wall, like the literal just wall. And I remember that was my childhood dream. When we go see Angie's room, she like forgets to p pick out her clothes the night before and she's really disappointed about it because she's gonna have to pick out her clothes in the morning. And we see that Pat has already, okay, this is where technology gets real scary. We already, Pat's already figured out what Angie would have picked. Like three different options that she would have picked herself that Pat, the smart house, knew because she's been listening to her I don't know it's kind of weird I bought the movie so I could watch it and I was like wow this is like some weird pre Alexa shit but don't worry it gets worse so some of the coolest things I think that we learn that the smart house has besides that cool ass video game room and the incredible wardrobe organizer is it has floor absorbers so everything you drop on the floor just gets absorbed into it and then goes into a trash compactor, which I don't know how that works. I don't understand. There is no technical or scientific sci science to explain this. Like that's definitely something like someone made up. Like there was, there was someone in that writer's room who was like, this is what I want in my smart house. Like this would be golden. As an adult, I only now 
fully realize how great floor absorbers floor absorbers would be if they really existed. There's one part though when they're in the kitchen and I thought this was so intrusive and rude, but they're like talking about like the types of food that Pat can make and she wants to serve all these treats and the dad's like, well, actually I'm trying to get them to cut down on snacks. Not to worry, Nick, my database was prepared by a team of nutritionists to ensure a balanced diet for each member of the family. And she can take at a she has this thing called a breath diet analyzer. Ben, say something to Pat. Uh, hey, Pat, how's it going? Fruit and fiber intake in the acceptable range, protein adequate, exhibits tendency to ingest excessive amounts of refined sugar. I told you to go easy on the sugar bursties. Hey, uh, how'd she know all that? Her atmospheric kitchen sensors act as instant breathalyzers and break down your entire diet. Care to give it a shot? No, thanks. I'm sorry, what? That's not real. That would never be a thing. Not to mention, right after this happens, Sarah, the creator of the Smart House, starts talking about how Pat isn't, you know, um, intrusive. You just broke down my whole diet in front of all of these people without my consent. Tell me how that's not intrusive. It's rude as hell. Besides the house, I haven't really talked about the family. So we know that Ben kind of considers himself the backbone and he kind of makes sure everything's taken care of so his dad has less to worry about. But also, Ben is controlling AF. His younger sister, Angie, is like, um, and then dad can start dating again and he can find us a new mommy. Which one, that sentence is like, whoa, that's a lot, bro. Like, chill out. And two, his response is like an immediate snapback and he's like, You just need to learn to think before you open your mouth. Dude, relax. It's gonna be okay. I'm not the product of like a parent who has passed away while I was young. So I don't know what it would be like. And I know that he's got his own issues he needs to work on. But dude, what the hell? Like, why can't your dad be happy? Like, <laughs> I don't understand this whole idea of like, well, mom was mom. And even though she's dead, he has to be alone forever. Like, where's the logic in that? Like, he's, he has needs, okay? <laughs> like, let him live. And later on, we even see like, Angie tells his dad, tells her dad about this and he goes and approaches Ben, but they don't really talk about it. Like Ben just lashes out and then his dad's like, well, I understand where you're coming from. And that's it. And like eventually Ben gets over it and like obviously the dad and Sarah hook up because again, this is a Disney movie and it's very simplistic like that. He eventually like cools it, but there's no like communication. Like. <laughs> Communication between kids and parents just never really works in Disney movies because parents are dumb. I don't know. So then we do a hard left from just a few little minor problems with Pat to a full-on iRobot takeover. This is when Pat goes super mom mode and turns into like 1950s Pat slash Peggy Bundy, but like with a mean streak. Pat turns into this like 1950s housewife and starts being incredibly controlling to everyone and it's kind of funny because i know that she's like a smart house and like she she does trap them in the house at some point but like also to some degree they had plenty of time to just leave or like turn her off permanently like there's a lot of moments where i was like um what why are you just listening to her like she's she, you're the human she's a computer like just go in the room and turn it off so first of all, she plans this party um, for Ben to help him be cooler at school, be more accepted, so that his this girl he has a crush on will think he's cool and to find a way to get the bullies to come over to the house so that Pat can take care of them. Uh, hey Pat, how about activating some kick butt video screens? Sure, Ben. Not okay that a house threw a party without his dad knowing like when you really step back and think about it huh wow what else is this house capable of because that's pretty pretty sketch and i think it's like what right after the party is when pat goes full psycho and makes like then she yeah and then she's a hologram and all of a sudden she's kind of alive this is nightmare fuel i don't know why i watched this as a kid and was like yes yeah, 
this movie's great. Like literally when I turned, when I bought it as an adult, as a 29 year old woman, I was like, man, I love this movie as a kid. And now I'm just like, this is a horror movie. This is a children's horror movie and we didn't know it. I'm scared. So ultimately, Ben must kind of let Pat go in order to put their lives back together. He tells her he doesn't need her and that he likes Sarah and he wants him and his Sarah and his dad to date and that Pat needs to freaking chill. And then everything goes normal. They stay in the house, which I don't know why I wouldn't move out immediately, but they end up staying at the house. Pat chills out, but she stays as like this like figure she creates on a screen. And <laughs> Sarah starts dating the dad and everything's cool beans. So now I have to ask the question, what did we learn from watching this movie? So here's what I think I learned from watching Smart House. Technology is great, but also incredibly scary. Avoid talking about your feelings at all costs with anyone. When you're a parent, never explain your emotions or what you're going through to your children because they probably can't handle it or have any clue what that's like. They didn't lose a parent or anything. And if you throw a kick butt party, you will be the most popular kid in school, regardless of any of your personality traits. So of course, this was all meant in good fun. I still love this movie. I will watch it again and again and again because it's just fun. I was thinking about doing one about Xenon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And if you guys like that, I'd love to do all of the sequels because that is definitely still one of my favorite Disney Channel original movies ever. So that's what I learned from watching Smart House. I hope that you learned something from watching this as well. Please tell me about it in the comments below. What do you think of this movie? Have you seen it? Do you want to see it now? What do you think of technology? Is Alexa eventually going to turn on us and kill us all? Let's talk about it in the comments. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you like this video so that I know and I'll make some more. And if you like watching people talk about TV, movies, or anything pop culture, please hit my little subscribe button and then the hit that bell notification so that you can be notified every time I upload. I'm really new to this and I can't guarantee I'm gonna be on a consistent schedule, but I hope that you had a lot of fun watching my video. And I'll catch you next time, bye.